$20,000 a bottle at least, maybe $30,000 a bottle. Welcome to the Wine Sanctuary. Today we are getting an inside look into one of New York City's most exclusive wine tasting experiences. We are stepping into the wine sanctuary of Mark Oldman, a world-renowned wine expert with a personal collection that he says is worth over half a million dollars. A private tasting with Mark is an experience usually reserved for A-list wine lovers, willing to shell out up to $3,000 a ticket. But today, Mark's gonna teach me how to taste like a billionaire. Ah, I did it. You're killing me. I talked about wine. <laughs> Honestly, I, I've been on the scene in New York ever since I taught my wine seminars in Soho uh, 25 years ago. I've gone to countless wine tastings. Even though sometimes I teach very illustrious wines, at my heart, I'm an anti-snob and I want people to feel comfortable around wine. Chateau Ikem, 1937. Some say this is the best year of the best dessert wine. These are Henri Jaillet, um, the godfather of all Burgundy winemakers. Uh, they look like humble bottles, but this would probably be $20,000 a bottle at least, maybe $30,000 a bottle. Um, the name is Riche Borg, and you could say this is the ultimate Riche beverage. This is Madeira from um, 1933. 1933 was the year of the repeal of Prohibition. Mark's Drink Like a Billionaire wine tastings are named after his newest book. They're a bespoke series of group events ranging from $499 all the way up to $3,000 a person that aim to teach anyone wanting to broaden their vocabulary in the world of wine. Like a billionaire tastings, most of them are here at my wine sanctuary. And I built this brick by brick, furnishing by furnishing, to be a cozy uh, getaway from the velocity of life. I've had uh, no end of celebrities, sports figures, um, many illustrious people come through here. Billionaires want the best of everything, but they don't necessarily order from the reserve list at a restaurant. They want to economize just like everyone else. So part of my job is to help people figure out what they like and what they don't like while giving them a framework. Opening people's eyes to the possibilities in wine is what I'm all about. I sat down with Mark to experience one of his tastings firsthand and hopefully pick up a few useful tips along the way. I want to show you how different various styles of a particular wine can be. I mean, that's one of the great lessons that my clients learn, that uh, there are different manifestations depending on the sunshine in the region and the soil and so forth. So we have two Sauvignon Blanc, and then you spin it and you smell it. Try that. Tilt it right in, nose in. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Is that part of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want to double the magnitude of the smell. Cover the wine with your hand. Ah. Also, it helps any splash that may happen. Exactly. Smell it. <laughs> and what's the difference when you smell it now? Stronger. Much stronger. Much stronger. Lit it, smell it, and then drink. Mm. 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 Do not drink sequentially. Drink simultaneously. Ooh. Ah, now go back to that one. Good. So two different Sauvignon like Blancs. To drink two wines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's the difference between these two? This one seems crisper to me, a little lighter. Completely. And this one's like creamier. Ah. I did it! You're killing me! I talked about wine. <laughs> Let's show you a Peron. 
In Spain, they're really in a celebration. What we're gonna do, you can do it with any wine, but I like white wine because it doesn't stain. Right, because there's a high percentage chance that I'm gonna spill this. Yeah, yeah. Let me just show you how it's done. So what you do is you start it with the spout close to your mouth, okay. and then you arc it out like a Roman fountain. Okay. okay? <laughs> Whoa! Oh, I'm gonna mess that up. Oh. <laughs> I'm, okay, so, I'm a little nervous. So, okay. so close and then tilt it towards you. Excellent, and then up, up. Oh, that's good for your first time, that's amazing. Oh. This is my new favorite way to drink wine. Yeah. I'm all in, I'm all in on the Perron. Wow, beautifully done, beautifully done. Excellent, oh, uh, yeah. Oh, perfect. And what I like to show my clients is that Pinot Noir actually tastes better and lighter reds, and sometimes for some people, all reds, when it has a bit of a chill. And I know it might seem like you're a Philistine, but no, no, no. I'm really or excited for what you're about to do. Order a little thing of ice. And here we go. And waiters who are truly wine savvy will know what we're doing and not have a problem with it. This makes me feel justified about things that I've done before in the safety of my own apartment. <laughs> <laughs> there are those purists who have dilution anxiety. Mm -hmm. So what you could do is leave it in, let's say 30 seconds and fish it out. Oh, that way it doesn't get watered down. Right. I see it. But, we're all friends here. Yeah, we're gonna leave it in because I've done that before and it tastes good. <laughs> so try, oh yeah, so let's try your Pinot when it's cooler. And you see how the flavors are focused? Yes. It's more refreshing. Yes, I really like wine. Mm. <laughs> this is a really good day for me. So for the final test, to see if you've really learned how to be a wine connoisseur, is we are going to pour champagne against non-champagne bubbly and see if you can taste which is the champagne. So I know champagne only means the wine that comes from the region of champagne, correct? Precisely, but only those grapes uh, from that region can be called champagne. Everything else is sparkling wine or cava or okay. prosecco. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay. ready. You're ready. I'm ready. For sure. And look at this, a blindfold. So I'm pouring two cava. Cava is basically what they call champagne in Spain. What should I be tasting to know the champagne? Does it taste perhaps higher quality? Often champagne has a certain yeasty, and I mean that in a good way, baked bread quality to it. And so the question is, does one of these have that extra dimension? Okay. So two Spanish cava, one champagne. Like a shell game, I'm gonna move these around. <laughs> and one of the cava has a bit of rosé, just to make it even more difficult. Okay. Hold on, oh, wait, wait, wait. Try, try, go to this one. Yeah, no, no, to, to your left. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, lit it, spin it. Now, another thing about real champagne is the bubbles, the texture, tend to be pinpoint. They're not bigger. They don't slap you around like a Canada Dry. They have a kind of creamy texture. This, to me, feels like the Canada Dry. I'm ready for the next one. Okay. So, your second is right here. Is this the champagne or is it the cava? We don't know, you're gonna have to test it out. It smells different than the first. Breathe it all in and then taste it. I think this is the champagne. Taste it. <laughs> Why do you think this is the champagne? It had that yeasty smell. And it has those creamier bubbles. I think this is, I have it as lots of, I think this is it. I feel confident. 
Now try the third. Oh. Okay. This one. This is the rosé. Oh! Am I right? Oh Are you my kidding God. me? Yes! Thank I you! I can't believe it. Oh, so I can't second. believe it. We have a $20 Spanish cava against a $70 real champagne versus a cava rosé. You guessed every single one of these. Yes! It's amazing how people at the very top of wine truly know how to relax around wine. As time goes on, you learn to loosen up about it and that the, the strict rules you thought were there are no longer there and you can have fun with it and find out what you truly like. This is your portable La Dolce Vita. And that is maybe the best way to end any wine tasting. <laughs> the look on her face says it all. <laughs> Mark had shown me that to drink with the city's elite, all it takes is just a little bit of know-how and a whole lot of knowing how to have a good time. I think I'm a little tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Okay. <laughs>